Hello and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Joel Rissinger of Newington. Well, welcome back to Bread of Life. It is an honor to uh, be working through 1 Corinthians chapter 4 with you this week. We left off um, yesterday in verse uh, 5, and we're talking about how to support your pastor. One of uh, my primary ministry roles is to encourage, support, cheerlead for pastors and their families, ministry leaders, missionaries and their families. I wrote a book several years ago called Things Your Pastor Would Love to Say But Can't. It's available on Amazon. If you want a free copy on PDF, you can email me. You can email Joel Rissinger at joelrissinger.com, and I'll get that to you. But at any rate, I think it's important. We have pastors falling off the map, you know, quitting left, right, and center uh, by the thousands every year, and yet we already have a shortage of pastors. So we need to encourage. We need to support. We need to build up. We need to find new ones and train and prepare and encourage them as well. How do we do that? Well, I think this passage can give us some, well, some good ideas. So let me pick up the, the text here in verse 5. Paul says, So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns, for he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. And then God will give to each one whatever praise is due. Dear brothers and sisters, I've used Apollos and myself to illustrate what I've been saying if you pay attention to what I've quoted from the scriptures, you won't be proud of one of your leaders at the expense of another. Wow. Verse 7, for what gives you the right to make such a judgment? What do you have that God hasn't given you? And if everything you have is from God, why boast as though it were not a gift? You know, if we avoid judging or comparing our pastor to other leaders, I think we've taken a huge step in the direction of supporting as we should. Sadly, in America today, and I see it in other countries too, where I'm blessed to travel, sometimes we treat church like we do uh, a good restaurant or finding a restaurant. You know, we're very much a uh, consumer-driven population in the Church of Jesus Christ, sadly. We pick a church based on the ambiance of the building and the sanctuary or the music or the, whether the pastor was entertaining or not and interesting or not. Um, first and foremost, we should pick a church based on where God is calling us to serve. Yeah, I said it, to serve. I mean, I could back that up in a whole series of messages that we don't have time for right now, but it's not a consumer mentality that should help us choose a church. It is a servant's heart that should help us choose a church. But at any rate, when we have a pastor, as many of us are blessed to have, many thousands are not blessed to have a pastor here and abroad, we shouldn't be comparing them to everybody else in an ugly way, negative way, or condemning or judging them. Uh, I don't mean that we shouldn't judge bad behavior, because Jesus said judge righteous judgment, but we shouldn't be condemning them constantly, you know, evaluating them. Sometimes I joke that, you know, we should have a bunch of people in the back with cue cards when the pastor tells a joke or, he, you know, tells a good illustration or gives a good point. They hold up a card, you know, with a score, you know, 5.8, 7.2, 9.8, you know, and give him a, uh, <laughs> a score like we were judging an athletic contest or, you know, some kind of uh, dive in a swimming, swimming pool. No, uh, that's not going to help. Every pastor has strengths and weaknesses. If he's preaching the word and he's leading people to Christ and he's trying to do the work of the Great Commission, he needs your support and mine. He needs our prayer uh, as well. And, uh, you know, in the first century, they didn't have the luxury of popping from church to church because they liked the coffee at one better than another, did they? Uh, you pretty much had one choice. Many of our Brothers and sisters overseas only have one choice. They can sit under a bobo tree or something in, in Zambia and listen to a preacher, or they can stay in their hut at home. Uh, we are blessed to have a smorgasbord of options, but I think we should choose based on where God calls us to serve, and we should commit not to judge or odiously compare our pastor to others. That will go a long way in providing the support the pastors need. You've been listening to Pastor Joel Rissinger of Newington, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.